Welcome to the second part of building a metal dust collector. When working in the shop on a sword, a lot of time is spent in front of the grinder and the generated metal dust has a tendency of getting everywhere. In the last video, I constructed a theme baffle to separate the dust from 16 gauge sheet metal. In this video, I will figure out how to suspend the blower and the baffle from a frame that I will construct. As before, all of this is a little bit from the seat of my pants and we will have to see how the final product turns out. In my mind, I'm already calling it the Frankenstein Dust Collector. I am removing the sheet metal stand and will build a frame from mild steel that can hold the whole blower so that the inlet points down, as you can see here. I am taking down the distance between the screw holes so that I can drill the flat steel bar at the same distance and then hopefully fit everything together just correctly. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, we will see about that. Before I drill the holes, I will carefully mark the center of the bar and then use a center punch to create a small indent for the drill bit. The blower is not really designed to run in this particular orientation, so it will be interesting to see if the impeller comes loose more easily when compared to operating it upright. For my other blowers, I definitely had to adjust the impeller using various set screws to prevent it from scraping the housing over the years. My somewhat simplistic idea to making the frame is to screw in the individual pieces and then just weld them together. To make it easier to fit the screws, I used drill bits with a slightly larger diameter. However, for this to be really of any benefit, I should have assured that I centered the screws on the holes. Somewhat obvious, but guess what I did not do. Oh well. As I don't want to damage the finish on the blower housing, I'm just placing a couple of tack welds before taking the frame off and welding it together properly. The cross brace from angle iron is hopefully strong enough to stay upright under the weight of the blower, which is surprisingly heavy. That said, as the impeller is made from steel, perhaps it's not so surprising after all. As the frame will stick out of the metal dust collector, I'm giving it a coat of spray paint to make it look better. Now I have to figure out the overall frame of the Frankenstein machine. I want it to be on rollers and essentially clad in sheet metal held together by angle iron. My steel saw horses placed at the right distance give me a reference for the width of the frame and also allow me to clamp everything together. Once I have tack welded the four pieces of angle iron in place, I can do a proper weld from the other side. There will be two of these frames, one for the bottom with rollers and the other one for the top where the blower will be suspended. To attach the four rollers, I will need to make some plates to which each roller can be screwed. Fortunately, there is a cutoff just perfect for the job, but it needs to be straightened a little bit first. None of this needs to be very precise. The most important bit is for the rollers to be level in the end.
I am transferring the location of the screw holes to the plate and then we'll center punch and drill them. A drill press is really a great tool to have for drilling into steel. With a handheld drill I usually blow out the holes by not being able to hold the drill completely steady. None of the welds here need to be particularly strong since they just need to hold the plate in place. However, since it's easy to do, I'm doing a complete weld against the seam. Again, the saw horses make it easy to hold the frame and to clamp the plate for the rollers so that it does not move when welding. Clamping also still allows for small adjustments of the hammer to center the plate against the frame and ensure that there is easy access to the screw holes all the way around. Alright, after some cleanup, it's time to attach the rollers and see how it all fits together. Looks good. Now let's go back to the top frame and figure out a way to suspend the blower from the little frame you saw me make earlier. For this construction I just end up using more angle iron as it is fairly rigid and still very easy to work with. Putting everything together is still a little bit difficult. Welding long seams has a tendency to warp the pieces due to the heat involved and clamping does not completely solve the problem. In this particular case, the frame lifted up a little bit and while the blower still fits, it's a little bit more difficult to attach than I would like. I need some more strength on the frame and will attach a couple more pieces of angle iron that can hold the frame for the blower in more places than just the one long seam I welded. With the blower in place I cannot weld the bottom so it's a little bit back and forth to completely weld everything. The remaining step in finishing the top frame is to weld two more cross braces in place that prevent the blower from tilting down under its own weight. This whole operation somewhat marred my beautiful paint job, so it's time for another black spray coat. I'm sure this will be the distinguishing mark for the whole project. After all this work, I wonder if the thin baffle will still fit. But more importantly, I need to figure out how high to make the dust collector based on how far off the floor I want the inlet to be. Afterwards, I just cut the legs to the right length and weld them to the top frame. The next challenge is welding the top and bottom frame so that everything is at the right angle and not skewed to one side or the other. 
A lot of clamping and the saw horses will need to help here again. At this point, the overall frame is finished, and now I need to figure out how to make airtight compartments from sheet metal. In addition to weather stripping, I suspect some silicon cork may be required as well. First, however, let's get back to the challenge of cutting the sheet metal without a break. I am trying an electric shear here, but the 16 gauge sheet metal is pretty thick, cutting with the shear is quite slow. This will be the bottom piece, and I will just reuse the holes from the rollers to attach it. This time using a handheld drill rather than my drill press. You can see how much longer it takes to drill these holes, even though the sheet metal is quite thin in comparison. To attach the sheet metal against the plate for the rollers, I'm inserting a couple of spacers to fill up the gap. That's it for this episode. I hope you will stay with me as I'm completing the Metal Dust Collector and will test its performance as well as its noise levels. If you like what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Another video project I'm very excited about is the visualization of pattern welding. In fact, I like the images I produced so much that I made myself a few t-shirts. If you like, you can get some for yourself. Just look at the links in the description. As always, thanks to all of you who joined me on Patreon. I appreciate it. See you next time.